How you doing everybody? Welcome to Randy's Road Life. And this is your awesome host, Randy. And so, as always, you see the title, that's why you're here. <clears throat> and hopefully I can help you uh, with some clarity, you know, and get you organized in this sense. Since you want to know, you know, what goes in to picking a load. What do you consider? You know, what is it that you need to think about? What is your thought process when picking a load? We're not going to deal with any particular load boards or nothing like that. We're just going to go into uh, the dynamics of actually considering a load, all right? So, as always, uh, if you haven't already done so, please like and subscribe. And at the end of this video, if you think this is pertinent and then you may, and then maybe you can learn something from me and leave a, a I think my head is crooked and leave a, a comment that maybe I can learn something from you and we can exchange ideas and knowledge. And so let us begin. Now, um, I had spent some time booking my loads. I've been in the trucking industry for quite a while. And so it is, uh, I think it's. Uh, obligatory on me to help pass some of this knowledge on to you guys so you know we can make the trucking industry from the trucker side you know a, a place that's worth uh having a career in okay and even owning your own business so like we have here in this particular truck and with me so anyways with that you know it's important that you guys always Become research-minded. Do your due diligence. That's a legal term. Due diligence means you you need to be informed on all categories and, and, and look up all the variables because uh, it always starts with you. So you have to understand what it is you like, what it is you don't like, what you don't want to haul, what you do want to haul. Now, let me say this. Now, there are a lot of key factors dealing in when you're considering uh, taking any particular load, it doesn't matter what type of load it is. So what we have to figure out is what endorsements do you have? Tanker, hazmat, uh, do you have a Twit card? You know, I'm not going to really deal with uh, doubles and triples. Um, so because this is people who have dedicated trailers and things like that. Maybe you have a reefer, uh, uh, a flatbed, maybe uh, you're a heavy hauler or a uh, step deck. You, you haul equipment, you have a dry van, all those, you know, you have a possum belly, things like that. So what, what we're dealing with is whatever your particular type of uh, trailer is, that's the first thing you consider. Okay. First thing you consider is what type of trailer do I have? I have a dry van. So I have to consider that. I can't, you know, uh, take a load that requires temperature control. I can't take a load that requires flatbed you know and, and all that other stuff so i got to be mindful of all that now there are tanker loads i can take because i have a tanker endorsement and those are the liquid totes you see the large liquid totes i can haul those so um so what we do is we figure out uh you know when we're looking at any particular load is it is what type of load is it you know driving reefer flathead things like that like i just said we have to figure out what that is when is the date it's picked up the time it's picked up you know what information do i need as a driver you know in the truck what you know uh license plate number register i mean they're gonna everywhere you go uh can be a different process okay not everyone has the same process we always got to keep this in mind things change from uh uh shipper to receiver uh, and um, receiver to shipper. Things change. Okay, so we, we have to be able to have the requisite information for these places. Now, uh, what we're going to consider is, do I like short miles, long miles? Do I want 500 miles or do I want 2,000 miles, so to say? And so then we got to figure that out. Then we got to look at the rate. Is the rate worth it? What is the weight, you know, in terms of mileage and rate? Because all those things play in together. Like, for example, uh, dispatcher today calls me and says, hey, I got a load. It's going to uh, Pennsylvania right there, kind of northern Pennsylvania, kind of on the, uh, the state line of New York. 
Uh, it's, it's heavy and low. It's up to 43, maybe 44,000 pounds. Uh, it's paying about $3 a mile. Now, typically, I take a $3 mile load all day. Okay? Here's my issue. Now, it's a heavy load. I'm going to throw through, go through a lot of mountains because I'm in Alabama right now. So, that means I got I to go through um, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Pennsylvania. Right? Those are all mountains. And so, it's heavy. So, I got to consider the fuel cost in that regard. So, my... And then I uh, then the next thing I got to consider is reloads, right? What is the likelihood of getting a decent load coming out? All right, because that's one of the first things I consider. I say, can how likely is it for me to get a reload out of there and it'd be a decent load at that? Okay, so I got to always consider that. So what I say to him is very simple. I said, how confident are you? All right, because a lot of times. It's good to have our broker answer his own question, all right? And for well, we don't know everything. He doesn't know everything. You know, we're both human beings. We both make mistakes. And so that's my question. I say, I asked him, I said, how confident are you being in that particular area, all right? Because I know there's not going to be a lot of reloads in, around in that area without deadheading 100 or more miles, that we're going to get reloaded with a decent load, all right? And so there he has to ha he has to be reluctant because it's hard to answer that question there's the answer right there no need to even go any further so then my statement is him i said even if we get a slightly less rate but the load is light it'll make up for it and the in the overall cost of fuel will be less than it was on the other load do you see what i'm saying here so if I'm at 44,000 pounds in my trailer, that puts me at almost 48. That put, actually puts me at 48,000 because this truck with the trailer is um, about 34,000 pounds. <clears throat> then, you know, I'm look, I'm going to be going slow up mountains. It's going to burn up my fuel. By the time I get to where I'm going, my fuel mileage is going to be like six something uh, miles per gallon. And by the time I get there, or after 900 miles, I'm going to be at around a quarter of a tank. And I got big gas, I got big fuel tanks in this truck. So it's going to eat up, it's going to eat up uh, my fuel uh, very quickly. However, a lighter load and also wear and tear in your truck. Remember this, the more weight, the harder your transmission has to work, harder your rears have to work and things like that adds what more way significantly more wear and tear in your truck. Now, a lighter load, okay, does not add all that much wear and tear as a heavy load would, obviously, for obvious reasons. Your transmission doesn't have to work as hard to pull and things like that. And <clears throat> also, your fuel economy will be much better. All right? So you will actually save money. All this stuff adds up. It all adds up exponentially in the end. And so those are the savings you have to keep in mind when considering a load. So then we find a load, right? It's going to, uh, this is going to Baltimore, Maryland. It's a two-stop load though, right? Which I don't mind. And it's paying, you know, at about 700 miles, it's paying upwards of, uh, I think he said like uh, 2,800 or something like that. That's great. I love it. That's awesome. Let's go. So then there's, I know, I think it's uh, 900 miles. Excuse me. Um, 700 something miles, I think. I forgot. Oh, oh, well, but I got all the, I got all the information, uh, actually on this phone right here so I can look it up again. But anyways, uh, it pays very well, you know, well over $3 a mile. I'll take it. Let's go. You know, so we get the load, we book it and stuff like that. And here I'm at Kohler and I know these loads are going to be light. I've hauled Kohler loads before. They're very light. And I already know, and look, I'm going to save money here. I got, my, my fuel tanks are full. I filled up at uh, 481 a gallon, right? Which is where I'm going. It's like 550, 540s, 530s, you know? So I'm already saving right now. 
to start the next load when I get there to get out of that area to, to hopefully get to a better area where I can actually find a place with cheaper fuel and then continue my savings. Because here, here, here's a fact. Here's a truth for you. Fuel is your biggest expense. All right, your single biggest expense. So now let me tell you about this. Now endorsements and your twig. Okay, Endorse <clears throat> endorsements will open up more avenues and possibilities for loads. My tanker endorsement opens up other possibilities for loads. Now, I intend to get my, my twig, which um, which I should have had already, which I should have got, but you know I keep getting absent-minded about it and stuff like that, so I gotta, um, so here's how you do the twig. It, it's very simple. It costs like 90 some dollars. What you do is you look, t you look up the TWIC process, right, in your particular city, and then you have to go in for a background check, right? You, you make you an appointment, go in for your background check, you pay the fee and stuff like that. And what they do, they mail you a card, right? And what this is, is to let the company know where you're going that is a secured company that you have had a background check and you pan out. Now, just because you have a felony or a misdemeanor and stuff like that does not automatically disqualify you. So don't think that, well, I have a felony, so I can't do it. You can, so just do your research. It is very uh, very specific and um, limited uh, restrictions on the TWIC when it comes to criminal offenses in your background. Now, uh, so you can get your TWIC, go in these high secure uh, places like military bases or or um, ports and things like that and get loads there. Also, that opens up more avenues. Having a hazmat, um, if your company insurance covers hazmat and you can run hazmat loads that is remember look into that before you pay the money and take all the time to do the tests and, and the studying and stuff like that before you do that because like i had it before and the company i was with their insurance didn't cover hazmat loads so i i had it for nothing so i so i let it drop off which i shouldn't have done i should have kept it here because i could have done it and it actually pays you more now, has, now, Hazman is a lot more technical, and there's there's another process for that, and you have to follow. So all these things are more considerations when booking loads. Okay, another thing on, on booking loads is is very simple: the date and the times. You know, you have to be looking, you know, at the load properly. Look at all the information on the load. What time is it? What date is it? Is it today? Is it tomorrow? What time do I pick it up? Is it FCFS, which is first come first serve, or does it have a strict appointment? Uh, is there any notes for the driver? What do I need to know prior to and getting there? Information that I might need. Uh, is there special directions? Because maybe this place is hard to get into and there's a particular way you get into it or a particular spot you, you get into it. Now, I mean, there's a lot of those circumstances you have to be aware of also. That's why <clears throat> uh, this process is so important. Um, another thing is what broker do you use? What app do you use? Stuff like that. That's all due to preference. You just look through all these things until you find something that catches your eye. And you're going to catch up. You're, something's going to catch your eye. You're going to take a couple hard looks at things, right? And what, it, what it'll come down to is, is you will train your eye to notice certain things, right? You'll develop a pattern of, of your preferences and stuff. And what what will happen is that you will see automatically catch loads that match up to your preferences all right so then all you got to do is like is this pain enough like that then you then you fill out the quote negotiate call email uh things like that and get the process done you know and do yourself a favor and try not to get caught up in pettiness all right that now i can go many different types of ways we're all so different things like that uh how i might book a load isn't maybe not the same way you would book a load my considerations are different than yours preferences are variable and can change with a moment's notice so we always always got to uh be aware of those things you know like the seasons and the time of years and you know some places don't have the same type of loads all year round you know like florida and california and and other places like that so we also got to be mindful of that and you also got to consider where the loads being picked up at how much deadhead where is it at and then where is it going what is your route you know and so you got to be be mindful is this a good route that i am taking is it a truck legal route because it's not worth your license 
all right? It's not worth the ticket and uh, court appearance and all that type of stuff and fines and costs and fees. It's not worth any of that. And so you got to also consider those things. Um, and then, you know, where do you want to run? Do I want to run just the Midwest? Because Midwest is typically uh, has the better rates. Do I, will I consider running in Northeast? Because we all know Northeast sucks. The traffic is bad. The roads are typically bad. There's a lot of tolls and stuff like that. And all that adds up. And, you know, New York, no New York. Uh, Rhode Island, no Rhode Island. Cali, no Cali. Florida, no Florida. I mean, we got to, that comes with experience, right? You're going to go to a place and be like, I never want to come back here again. All right. Now, I, I tell my dispatcher, um, the only way I go back, I go up to the Northeast is if the rate is good enough or too good for me to turn down. All right. Because what has to happen is the rate has to be so good as to cover the lack thereof of the next one. All right. Because those rates coming out of the Northeast are are, are horrible. So you got to be mindful of that. And it, I mean, and also to help you cover the tolls, you know, without taking a, a loss or, or, or adding up on your overhead, you know. So, and then parking up there is really bad. <sighs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. So, um, and there's that. So, you know, then there's, you know, your clock. Be mindful of how much time you have. Because you don't want to book a load and not have, the, um, the, you know, the requisite amount of hours to deliver the load. You will look really silly. Because let me tell you what brokers don't want to do. They do not want to work with someone without the appropriate experience. Okay. Some of them may want you to have two or three years owner operatorship experience before they work with you and things like that. And there's a reason why they do this. It's because of all the, the you know, the, the lack of professionalism, uh, the lack of maturity, the lack of uh, uh, work ethics and stuff like that. And some of the, the you know, the newer age truck drivers um, is very deplorable and they don't want to deal with that. So you're here to convince these guys that you know how to do the job, you know what you're doing, you're going to do it to the best ability. And this is your moment to apply great customer service for yourself. And plus you may even spark your relationship up with a broker and then that relationship will build into something like dedicated past the house. You know, I have a friend who uh, was a, he's an owner operator with his own authority and he ended up on a dedicated route with, you know, through a broker with Publix and was getting paid great, you know, and his, he, he didn't have to haul his own trailer. He hauled theirs, you know, so there's less wear and tear of his trailer. He had to pay for any of that. And he, he made awesome money as, a, as an owner operator because he had a relationship with a broker and uh, he scored a dedicated route and he was home all the time, right? That's why it's so important to have great customer service, have great professionalism, have a great attitude when you go in these places. Be, be friendly, be kind, be nice, you know what I'm saying? And be prepared. Please be prepared. What's your truck number? What's your trailer number? What's your bill of lading number? What's your PO? What's your PU? Things like that. They're going to want to know these things. So try to have as much information as possible because, you know, brokers don't always give you the, the right information or all of the information. All right. So sometimes you have to uh, check it and things like that. Double check it, triple check it, make sure everything is correct. And then you go in that shipping department, receiving department, and you give them. Uh, the right information so you can get loaded and get on the road or get unloaded and get on the road all right that's that's it what it is about is getting to the next load right with a good rate that's what we all want that's what we all strive for so that's a lot of things you consider in booking loads all right so you want to be organized if you have to write this th write this stuff down so when you're looking at loads you have an idea in front of your face, right? That your eyes can see of what you're looking for, all right? Write it down. And when you're looking at a load and you call a broker, write it down, you know? So, and then, you know, keep, like, for example, uh, I used to always keep a, a copy printer scanner in my truck. I used to always do that. 
And I used to plug in my laptop and print everything out and copy and scan stuff and store stuff away and things like that. Look, do that if you have to, right? It's all smart business management, all right? A lot of guys and women get into the lease purchase owner-operatorship business and they do not have proper business management skills, all right, it takes experience and it takes time to understand how to run your truck properly, how to book loads properly, what to consider when you're booking loads. Because all this stuff should be done by the time you book this load, right? You should have went through this entire checklist before you call that that broker, before you call a customer. All your considerations should already be done and checked. Check them all off. Then you call, is this load still available? All right. Can we negotiate the price? Can I get an extra $200 on this? Let me, I'll take it at this price. It's going through the amounts like that. The fuel cost is going to be more uh, expensive, so I would do it at this price. Or what's the going price? Okay, I want the load. Uh, do you want to cut another driver? Mm. That is a great question, right? Uh, personally, uh, I frown upon that. I, it's something I would not be comfortable with doing. And so uh, I stay away from that. So if I know another driver has bid on it and, I'm, and that's some knowledge I have, then I'll move on to the next thing. All right. So, but if I know the, the load is still open and stuff like that and I, and I call, I say, Hey, this load is still available. And we go from there. All right. If the load is already good enough at where it's at, I just take it to what it's at. You know, if I'm going 700 miles. Uh, and the load is paying 2500 bucks. Look, that's well over $3 a mile. I'm happy with that. I don't have to rock the boat. I don't have to be petty about it. I, you know, I'm not going to even try to negotiate. I'm going to take the load as it is, and, you know, after it meets all my considerations and, 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 and checks and stuff like that. I'm going to take it. All right, look, let's book it here. You know, where do I sign? And let's get on with, the, with our business. All right. So there's a lot of things to consider. The whole idea is to be organized in your mind. And if you have to, like I said, write it down and then understand some brokers might not want to deal with you. Okay. If you're in a lease purchase, they're dealing with the company you're leased to. And let me tell you something. If you want to burn the bridge really fast, then act dishonestly towards a broker when you're leased to a company and they will revoke your contract quickly because no company, no company wants to be blacklisted by a broker, okay? Be very mindful of that. Professionalism is key. On time is key. So, you know, check all your T's, dot all your I's, and always, always strive to be professional because you're representing not just yourself, but the company you're leased to, all right? You're using their DOT number, their MC number, all right? You're using their stuff. Remember, it's a partnership. You're providing customer service, not just for yourself. Okay? Remember that. Not just for yourself. It is a business partnership. So with that, if you like the content and I've said something that helps you out, please like this video. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Hit that bell to get notified when I do, when I do these videos. And then, you know, we'll move on. You know, and, and just make the industry better as best we can. So with that, deuces, peace. Love you guys. See you on the next one.